Hello and welcome to a special Kerbal Space Program video. This is still inside my campaign playthrough, but I'm trying to restrict how much time I devote to my airplanes, because as you might have gathered by now, I'm such a nerd that if I let my interest in planes take over, um, I'll never get around to going to space or doing anything interesting. But this is obviously um, my best take as an X-29. Pretty neat looking little plane. Um, and I'm mainly doing this video to explain some more advanced aerodynamic concepts from real life. Um, and starting with the X-29, it, contrary to popular belief, it really didn't exhibit anything in the way of exceptional maneuverability. Um, and that has more to do with the computer controls at the time. They had control surface rate limiters and stability management that really wouldn't allow the plane to perform at what the airframe itself could handle mainly because they didn't want to run the risk of the plane getting itself into a situation that the pilot would not be able to recover from because of a calculation speed error. So it was actually pretty well damped down um, from what it really could have done. Um, so maneuver maneuverability wasn't too exceptional, which much like uh, this one I've uh, designed, it's not too excitingly maneuverable compared to what other things I've done. But there were still some interesting bits um, just lost a ailer on there. There were still some interesting things figured out during the program, such as um, the big advance in the X-29 was the composite wings. Metal, rigid metal wings had a habit of twisting back and tearing themselves off. Um, sometime in World War II, the Germans were experimenting with forward swept wings, um, and that was some of the issues they were running into, causing structural damage to the plane. The Composite wings were able to twist back and return to their normal shape without doing permanent damage themselves. And they also discovered that in a stall situation, as airflow started to detach from the wing surface, instead of rolling off the edge like a conventional aircraft and losing lift, it tended to go more towards the wing root, which allowed the aircraft to maintain a lot of post-stall um, control that he otherwise, the plane otherwise wouldn't have had. So that was my take on the X-29. I think it looks kind of cool. But now I'm on to the X-31, and you'll see those veins at the tail. Those are th early thrust vector nozzles, and that was pretty much the main um, advantage and advance being tested in the X-31. Was It was a joint German and American program, and they were testing, obviously, thrust vectoring in a fighter-sized aircraft. And it was true three-dimensional thrust vectoring, not two-dimensional like on the uh, F-22 which is just on the vertical axis. And con I was actually surprised. I built this thing just to look like the X-31, and probably because um, thrust vectoring is so powerful, it actually exhibits a lot of the flight characteristics of the real aircraft. Um, but I would really like to use this uh, video, because I didn't go into a whole lot of detail on my last one, about what post-stall maneuvering or super maneuverability actually is. In a very limited sense, you are able to develop new exotic maneuvers that would be useful in a combat situation, but only in a very limited range, such as um, the Cobra maneuver would be very useful in um, bleeding off a lot of airspeed and forcing an overshoot. However, if you do it wrong, you're more likely to cause a mid-air collision, or as you dip nose low, if you bleed off too much energy, um, you'll be a sitting duck for another plane to cruise around behind you and come for a re-attack. Um, speed is life in airspeed, in air combat, and so you definitely don't want to be bleeding that off. The uh, other application would be the Herbst maneuver, which was actually developed on the X-31, and it's essentially a fighter jet handbrake turn. It's an ability to change direction in an extremely small amount of space, which has its applications, but it's a very limited um, It'd be very situational. But as you can see, I can just push this thing way over and not really have to worry about losing control. Even when it goes almost 180 degrees out, almost using space terms, almost completely retrograde, um, it's still completely under control. And this is where Kerbal Space Program is a lot more useful in demonstrating, say, a Cobra maneuver than a flight simulator because I have those indicators to show you what retrograde is and the uh, flight path on it. So you can see that was a very extreme um, 
angle of attack deviation and still able to completely controlled bring it back. It's actually quite fun to fly. Um, still have to be very mindful of your speed as um, you will always have to do in Ferrum because as the X-29 demonstrated, it's still possible to rip little bits and bobs off the plane as you're trying to fly. But this thing was actually very surprising. I threw it together in about five minutes um, just using a vague uh, visual reference on the X-31 and this is what I got. This actually probably has a lot to do with thrust control, uh, thrust vectoring being so powerful in this game. Um, but once again, this thing handled uh, like a champ. But I really, the main point of this, as I said before, was I don't want to devote a whole lot of time to showing these things off in my uh, career playthrough. But in the early 90s, a lot of what NASA was doing was really advanced aerodynamics research. So I, I want to fold that into my playthrough somehow, but I'm probably not going to show these things flying off aerial survey missions. Uh, I've kind of come up with a compromise. I'm going to design a new aircraft for those survey missions to bring money in. But uh, not going to really show the whole mission because they get really tedious and boring. And real world homework's looking like it's going to be pretty brutal this week. So I'm probably not going to get the latest video out on Sunday. I'm going to try to get it out sometime uh, Monday. I just got to get enough uh, time to actually play. So stay tuned.